Outrun 2 is somewhat of an oddity. When the arcade release was ported to consoles in 2003 and 2006, it witnessed the rise of simulation racing, need for speed, and burnout. A simple upgrade of the first Outrun game wouldn't be enough to stand out in a highly competitive market, so it's a good thing that the arcade version of Outrun 2 already had a trick up its sleeve. It's Drift. Now, at the time, drifting wasn't exactly a novel concept. In fact, it was a key pillar in the gameplay loop of Need for Speed games at the time, and many others like it. However, unlike its competition, OutRun 2 saw no need to be realistic. And this is what makes the drifting notable. Before we dive into it, I think a rundown of the drifting system is in order. In OutRun 2, there's actually two ways to drift. The first is brake drifting. To initiate a brake drift, you have to release the accelerator, pump the brake, then alternate back to accelerating, all whilst turning. This initiates a drift lock, allowing you a certain degree of freedom in your drift without it resetting. It can also be used to swap drifting directions, making it easier to snake around corners. The other method is known as gear shift drifting. This involves dropping down a gear right before a turn. Brake drifts are generally quicker, but they understeer. Gear shift drifts, in comparison, are easier to control. Drifting in Outrun 2 may look arcadey and simple, but dig a little deeper and you start to uncover what makes it so special. An obvious feature which betrays any guise of realism is the drifting animation. Anyone with a slither of knowledge of cars would know that they can't move sideways, but this helps give the game a distinct look. Crab walking cars kicking up plumes of smoke are instantly recognisable. These exaggerated animations and effects also make drifting much more satisfying due to their high visual feedback. It's not just the cars that make the drifting look stylish, the road itself also plays a part. Curves in the road are often banked inwards, which creates the illusion of centrifugal force, as if the track is somehow trying to throw you outwards. Defying this force makes you feel that much better at the game. To add to this effect, the edges of turns are sometimes lined with cones. This means that a misjudged wide turn will result in knocking these cones aside as you scrape along the edge of the track, further emphasising this feeling of being thrown around corners. Staying on track by the skin of your teeth is inherently satisfying, but hearing the rumble of cones as you pass is a magical sound shower. One notable addition to the classic formula is a rival system. The system itself is very simplistic, with the other racers not providing any real challenge. In fact, they're mostly there to let you pass them giving you a sense of additional progress. The reason this system actually works is because it adds a bit of flourish to the drifting. As you approach a bend, you might see a car ahead drifting, kicking up dust in its wake. Often, you'll find yourself synced up with them, resulting in a cool looking natural set piece. What's especially great about the rival system is out drifting your foe, as you give them a last wave. Sure, overtaking rivals feels great, but that feeling would be shallow if it were a simple feat. Thankfully, the drifting is fine-tuned to be challenging but forgiving where it matters. You can move about whilst drifting, but only so much. In fact, cars travel a lot like curling stones, where they have a high degree of inwards turn, but are able to travel in an almost straight line if you work against it. In this case, you'll be holding away from the turn for the majority of the drift, waggling the analog stick back and forth to adjust your line. In making you fight the drift, the game makes each and every turn seem like an accomplishment. 
With difficult turning mechanics, you may think obstacles would make it frustrating, and yes, that is true. In the original arcade game, colliding with vehicles resulted in a massive loss of speed. The random nature of the vehicle spawns meant that sometimes you'd have an impossibly difficult space to manoeuvre due to how challenging drifts could be. Thankfully, the console ports of the game greatly reduced the speed loss, making it far less punishing. This was likely down to the concern that the game was too difficult. A concern not really present for the coin-munching arcade version. Outrun 2's drifting mechanic is expertly crafted to be a satisfying experience. This is done through its visual look, the design of the track, the inclusion of a rival system, and a well-balanced difficulty despite its challenging controls. These come together to make this addition to the Outrun series a valuable one. In fact, many of Outrun's spiritual successors also include the drifting scene in the second game. This, above anything else, shows how the inclusion of drifting expanded Outrun's identity and brought it into a new age.